Hello again, YouTube. First, let me send out a big thanks to my loyal subscribers. Here in the garage is our 7th generation 2003 Honda Accord. It's got a minor problem with an intermittent airbag light. Does the airbag light on your Honda come on intermittently like this one? Then this may be your problem. You may also see that your seatbelt light does not come on or go off when it should. For example, I'm going to plug in the seatbelt now and see if it goes off. And it did. But then I retracted the seatbelt and it didn't come back on. That's a faulty switch in the seatbelt buckle. There, now I finally got it to come back on. So I think I've confirmed that I got a bad seatbelt buckle switch. Now since your seatbelts are an integral part to the restraint system in addition to the airbags, any problem with that system will set off the airbag light. And if the seatbelt switch fails intermittently, then the airbag light can come on intermittently. It looks like that's what we've got going on here. Now this is apparently a common problem across different Hondas, not just the Accord and maybe likely uh, other manufacturers as well. So this can apply to Civics and lots of other cars with the same type of seatbelt buckle switch arrangement. So there's our driver's side seatbelt buckle and the switch inside is what we're after. We can gain better access to that by lowering the seat. Suppose you can make this repair on the car and remove these two screws to remove the buckle casing and get inside of the switch. But uh, for the purpose of this video and for illustration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and remove the entire buckle and take it inside so we can work on it in there and get a better look. And that would be the same procedure you would do if you're going to just replace the whole buckle. To further illustrate how this buckle comes out, I'm just going to roll the seat back and reveal these two bolts that anchor the seat to the floor. There's one here on the left and one on the right. There's also two in the rear. Let's remove these front ones first. Now I'm going to slide the seat forward all the way up. Now going into the back seat. I got these two plastic covers that uh, we need to remove to get at the rear bolts. I'm just going to use my panel tool. Trying to be careful not to break them. Now we can easily get to these back two bolts. By the way, all four of these are 14 millimeter. All right, now let's tilt the seat all the way forward and then slide it back on its rails and then tip it back into the rear of the car. Now with the seat laying way back on itself, we now have better access to this electrical connector. That blue electrical connector right there. That's the one that comes up from the floorboard here and up and attached to the bottom, it's anchored to the bottom of the seat and it goes around to the seat belt buckle. There's a little tab here, you can press that in. And we should be able to unplug this. There we are. I'm also going to remove this wire uh, anchor that's holding it to the bottom of the, of the seat so I can take the seat out. I'm going to use my panel tool to see if I can get under this, this clip. Pop it out without destroying it. You certainly don't need to go to this much trouble, but again, I'm just going to do this for demonstration purposes. There we go. Now with that, I can remove these other two electrical connectors. There. Now my whole wiring harness is disconnected from the seat. So let's pull the whole driver's seat out so we can get a better look about what's going on under there. So here's the opposite side of the seat. And the underside and how the wiring attaches. I'm just going to pop these anchors off starting with the end. Again, using my panel tool. And 
the next one. These panel tools are great. They're they're non-marring. They're good for dashboard work. And when they're on sale at Harbor Freight, they're about seven bucks for four of them. Now the next one's right here, and I can get to the back side of it right here and uh, pinch it with my needle nose pliers. And the last anchor is right here on the side, right here. And I believe I can get to the back of that one too with my needle nose pliers. You can see what these little anchors look like. They're just plastic clips. They slide through a hole and then snap through and open on the other side. And they're actually a zip tie as well that goes through that little hole there and they push it through and that's how they install it at the factory. And then lastly the buckle itself is anchored to the frame with this 14 millimeter bolt. And there we have the whole assembly. Let's take this inside and get a better look. All right, we're inside on the bench now and we're taking a better look at the buckle. There's a switch inside and you can see the wires that go to it right there. As the buckle is inserted in here, it will open or close that switch that's inside so we need to get to it. Now there's two screws here that hold the case together and these are those security torque screws. If you can see more closely, I don't know if you can see that on the video, but it's not only a Torx bit, but there's also a little post right in the middle that keeps you from using a regular Torx bit on that. So what you need is a security bit set. And these can be had, I think, for maybe 10 bucks or so from Harbor Freight. And what we're looking for is a T10, which is this one. And you can see that's a regular Torx bit, but it has a hole in the middle to fit over that post in the screw. Now we can use this security T10 bit and remove these screws. And get into the case. Now the case just lifts off and unhooks from the top. It's got those little legs that fit up in there. Put that aside. And there's our switch right there. You can already see it. I also want to remove the back of this uh, casing here. Let's see, how does this come off? Okay, just off the bottom. Just like that. That, that hooks over the top of the red part. Now we get even a better look at the switch. This little micro switch on the side depresses right there. It's got a little red boot on it inside there surrounding the plunger I guess to keep dust and dirt out of there so there's our switch right there that we need to deal with I'm gonna remove the switch from the buckle it's held on by a spring clip it kinda of looks like the shape of an M if you can get under one side of it like that and lift it up and the other side pop that guy up and out There we are. I'm just going to leave the metal part of the spring clip in there because uh, the plastic part just snaps down into that. I've got one more anchor point that's holding the wire on. And again, I think I can just grab the legs and pinch them together and then push that through. And now it's free. Here's a closer view of the switch. Now that pushes on the little plunger there. By the way, be careful not to bend this little metal thing very much because it'll fatigue and snap off right there. But there's a little black plunger and that red boot. Now, what we need to do is get some, some contact cleaner down inside of that switch. And the only way to get to it, since this thing appears to be glued together, is to go down through that boot. Now, I'm reluctant to tear up that boot, uh, but then we'd lose any further protection from you know, dirt and grease and whatever getting down in there as time goes on. Lord knows, a lot of stuff falls down into our seatbelt buckles on a regular basis. So what I did is I took a little straight pin 
and I've bent a hook onto the end of it and hopefully I can use that as a tool to get in behind that boot. So just as a trial run what I'm going to try and do hopefully this is going to work. Get in behind that boot next to the plunger there. And now with it like that maybe I can kind of pull it to the side and get a little gap in there. I don't know, let's give that a try. So here's my can of electrical contact cleaner. Hopefully I'm going to be able to spray that down into that switch and work it so that we can get uh, better contact inside of it. Alright, I worked on this for a little while. What I managed to do is to get the pin, the bent pin, in through the top of the boot and then I pulled it over to the side and then taped it down to the case. So if you can see it's kind of holding the boot to the side. So now I've got a little access hole that I, I think I can spray some of this contact cleaner in. I'll put some newspaper down so I don't make too much of a mess. And we're going to try and spray this down into that hole. Get as much of that down in there as I can. And then I'm going to exercise the switch. I'm going to work it down into the contact points. This stuff also serves as a lubricant, so it's good for the internals of a switch. Alright, let's see what that did. Hopefully that got down into the internals of the switch and cleaned those contacts. We won't really know how successful we are until we get it all back together and back in the car. I think that worked okay. The, uh, the integrity of the boot is still intact. So we should be good for the future. Before we reassemble the buckle, I'm going to try to remove this metal clip. I think we have to remove that before we can get the switch back into it. And it has two little wings that uh, spread out on the back side. Here it comes. i got one of those legs out. Got to work it out. There we go. Let's take a look and see what this really looks like. Those wings spread out once it snaps into the hole. So compress those back in a little bit since they got bent out of shape. Now let's put the clip back onto the switch. Should just slide on that post. There we are. That's what she should look like. Alright, so let's orient this the correct way. So the word press is up. And you'll note there's a little hole right here. In that hole is where that little post goes. That post is sticking up from the switch. So we'll insert the post into the hole and snap it in in one motion. There. Our switch is secure. Now with the switch back in, we can kind of get an idea how this thing works. When the buckle is inserted in the slot, this slides down over the switch and depresses the switch. Then when it's released, the switch comes back out. I'll go ahead and snap this anchor back into the hole. Okay, let's put the case back together on it. So with the word press up, we'll take the outer part of the case, slide it over the, the latch, and we want to route the wires from the switch to the outside of that post. There you go, see how the wires are here? In the top part, we'll hook those legs under there and push it down until it's closed. Place the two security screws. Again, using that T10 security bit. And now it's ready to go back on the car. All right, let's get this thing mounted back on the seat. It's got a little pin here that goes into this hole. 
make sure we insert that pin into the hole before we tighten up the bolt. See now how that pin sits in that hole. That allows it to rock a little bit, but still stay pointed up. Now with the buckle secured to the frame, we can attach the wiring harness back to the frame. So snap this one in here. And this one goes in this hole right here. Now laying the seat up on its side, there's one more place to attach the, uh, the wire to the frame. And it routes underneath the bar here, and there's a hole right there. So we simply snap that into the hole. Up oh, there's one last anchor point here, this oval shaped hole takes the connector itself, snap it in there. Now we're ready to put the seat back in the car. Now before we bolt it back in, let's lift it up and plug the wires back in. There's three connectors. Gray, yellow one, and the blue one that we just worked on. And then I'm going to reattach the wiring harness to the bottom of the seat. Snap that back in place. Now we can bolt it back in, starting in the back. Now I'm going to slide the seat forward so I can get to the bolt positions. Line up those holes and install the bolts. Now I can just snap on the covers. Slide the seat back to gain access to the front bolts. All right, let's see how we did. I'm going to put the key in the ignition. And there's our seat belt light on as it should be. Now I'm going to plug in the seat belt and see if the light goes out. And it does. Let me cycle this a few times. That's exactly what we should have. Looks like my airbag light there now is going off properly. Give it a second. Yep. I think that's a result. Well, that sure was the result I was looking for, and the price was certainly right. I hope that was helpful. If you found it interesting, please give it a thumbs up. Stay tuned for more videos, and subscribe if you like them. Until next time, thanks for watching.